Uh, first, I'm going to give you a background of the cottage food bill in general. So keep in mind, this deals with breads, cupcakes, other things other than honey producers. So bear with me as I whip through this fairly quickly. So uh, July of last year, the governor signed uh, into law basically the cottage food bill, which allows you folks to produce uh, cottage foods at your residence without being licensed. What is a cottage food operation? Now keep in mind, I'm going to go through this relatively quickly so I can get through everything. It's a per person who produces or packages cottage food products only in a kitchen of that person's primary domestic residence. The difference is maple syrup and honey, you can do it in an outbuilding and or a honey house. Cottage food operation. This is exempt from licensure uh, in our Michigan Food Law of 2000, Act 92. Once again, that was signed into law last July and it went into effect immediately. What is a single family residence? Place where you live, could be an apartment, a condo, a rental home. It could not be a frat house or a sorority where there's a communal group of folks living there because of food safety issues. Once again, you can do this in a honey house. What are co cottage food products? Here's the kicker here. Cottage food product means a food that is not potentially hazardous, as termed in the, defined in the food code. What is potentially hazardous? It's foods that require time or temperature controls for safety. Needless to say, you can leave bread out. It's not going to produce uh, pathogenic microorganisms. It may get moldy, but you're not going to get sick by it. These are uh, foods that are allowed. Breads, cakes, including celebration cakes, wedding cakes, fruit plies, including pie crust made with butter, lard or shortening, cookies, similar baked goods. Um, I, I, you can read these yourself, vinegar, dried herbs. Uh, you can actually buy bulk mixes and then repack them yourself under the cottage food law. So you could buy large quantities of this, repack it, and that's legal under the cottage food law. Dried pastas. Once again, popcorn, cotton candy, many other things. Once again, non-potentially hazardous. That's the key. Jams and jellies and glass jars that can be stored at room temperature. Another product allowed. What foods aren't? As I mentioned before, potentially hazardous foods are not allowed. That means they require either time or temperature controls. And I'll give some examples. Meat and meat products like uh, fresh dried meats, jerky can't do. Raw seed sprouts. Canned fruits or vegetables, salsas. Once again, I'm not going to read every one of these for you. Uh, pies that require refrigeration, fish and fish products like smoked fish, all exempt under the cottage food bill. You cannot do these unless you're licensed. Once again, a whole other list. This is available on our website. At the very end of my presentation, I do list that website. You're more than welcome to go through this, but as I mentioned, I'm crunched for time, so I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Uh, how do I sell my cottage food? Cottage foods must be sold directly to the consumer. They cannot be sold wholesale for resale in a retail outlet. Exception is honey and maple syrup producers. You can sell wholesale for resale in an outlet. You do not have to sell directly to a consumer. That is the change for the cottage bill for you, for you folks. And at the end of the slide, I'll get more specific, and hopefully that will answer some of your questions. Um, once again, for those products I showed before, this is only where they can sell those. These are all temporary food establishments or temporary uh, establishments that they can sell at. How do I sell my cottage foods? They must be prepackaged. So if you're selling your honey and you want to sell it at a farmer's market, whatever it may be, it's already got to be packaged. It couldn't be in a bulk container. Someone comes up, all right, here you go, here's a pound of honey. Can't do that. Uh, no open or exposed foods, same thing. You're not going to have a big old tub of honey, dip it out, here you go, there's some more. You can't do that. <laughs> Cottage foods cannot be sold. This isn't you folks, but once again, I'm trying to give you a background. Um, they can't be sold to a retailer for them to resell or to a restaurant for use or sale in a restaurant. Different for you folks. You can sell directly to a restaurant. Um, the, the foods I had showed you previously, you can't sell them over the internet, by mail order to wholesales, brokers, or other food distributors. You folks can. And I hope this works out really well for you because it was really designed for the small producers so you don't have to spend a ton of money to be able to market your product. And because honey is non-potentially hazardous, the risk is very low for honey, that is on there for you. Why can't I sell my cottage foods to my favorite restaurant or grocery store? Once again, 
These are the breads and things like that I listed. The reason why you can't sell them, they're really not approved. You're not from a licensed facility. However, we have approved honey and maple syrup. That means you can sell those directly to a restaurant. You can wholesale them. Um, a cottage food operation is a home kitchen which is unlicensed and not inspected by a regulatory authority. Most of you folks, I'm guessing, you're probably not uh, extracting your honey in your home kitchen. So you have an exemption there. You're able to do that in your honey house. But you can do it in your home kitchen if you wanted to. Cottage food, uh, as I mentioned before, unless it's an approved source, you can't sell it to a restaurant or grocery store. You folks would be approved. I'm going to skip the next one. More or less, it's to talk about food safety practices, but I want to get through this. Do I have to label my cottage foods? Yes, you are required to label it. This is just the basic what you need. Common or the usual name of the food. Honey, raw honey, comb honey on there. Name and address of the responsible party. Who's making it? Where do you live at? And later we'll get more specific what you're going to need on there. Net context, weight, volume, or quantity. If you're using weight, which I think most of you folks do, one pound, or it also has to be a metric. So it's got to be in English and metric as far as the weight. Allergen declaration, or list of ingredients. Should be just honey, so you don't have to list your ingredients. Allergen declaration. I hope none of you folks are using a honey house that maybe you're dealing with tree nuts, peanuts, other food allergens. If you do, you're going to have to note that this was manufactured in a facility that also handles tree nuts or peanuts. As you know, it just takes a little bit of a peanut if someone has a peanut allergy to get sick. So my suggestion is I wouldn't do it in my honey house. The most important thing is the following statement. Made in a home kitchen that has not been inspected by the Michigan Department of Agriculture has to be in at least 11 font, which is about an eighth of an inch. I did talk to my supervisors and I said, now wait a second, home kitchen. I know they're all not going to do it in their home kitchen. Can they say home kitchen or facility? Yes, you may. A gentleman yesterday came up to me and said, we don't really make the honey. The bees do that. We extract it. <laughs> do I have to put made? Unfortunately, the legislature put made in there. So yes, you have to put made. I realize you folks aren't the bees out there. So. Here's an example of a cottage food label. At the top, you can see the statement that has to be on there about made in the kitchen, not inspected by us. The name of it, of the product, sourdough bread. The net weight in ounces and in grams. The ingredient declaration. As you can see, back in the day, they used to allow you just to put wheat flour enriched. Now, you get to put all that stuff afterwards. So, uh, last but not least is the name of the responsible party that made it. In this case, Renita Phillips gives her address, city, state, and zip code. Cottage food operator. As a cottage food operator, you are not required to meet NSF standards. And that's a food uh, evaluation group. Um, if you're making bread, yes, you can make it in a wood-fired kitchen. This is pretty important. You may need a DBA, but you're going to have to contact your local municipality to see if they require it. Even though you can sell the product, there may be some requirements. You have to be a doing business as something like that. So it's really important to check with your local municipality regarding that. Cottage food law only applies to human grade food. For pet food, you can go to that website listed below. Here's something important. Limits on cottage foods. If you sell more than 15,000 or more, or more, excuse me, more than 15,000, you have to be licensed. Uh, gross sales are based on a particular domestic residence. If you have five folks uh, that are producing honey, you don't get to do $75,000. It's $15,000 or less. Um, we may request in writing to verify your annual gross sales. My guess is the only time we would ever do that is maybe if I saw you in some of the major chains and I'm thinking, boy, I, I see this honey everywhere. I think they're doing more than $15,000. Uh, but I would say in general, that's probably something we're not going to do unless we see it right off the bat. Um, cottage food products must be made in your kitchen, stored in your single family domestic residence, can't be made in an outbuilding, shed, or barn. Exception is you folks, honey and maple syrup producers, you may do that. Uh, the cottage food amendments are to the Michigan food law. As I mentioned before, you still got to make sure you meet local zoning or other laws and other provisions, including the tax law. In general, your food won't be taxed but maybe you're doing something in your operation where you are taxed and you're still going to have to follow those laws. Um, to me, one of the most important things is a cottage food operator 
it's your responsibility to assure your food's safe. So follow good manufacturing pack practices. Make sure your pesticides are locked up in a pesticide uh, locker. Make sure if and when you do use pesticides, you read the label and follow the label directions. Uh, critical. What's my role in the cottage foods? If there's a complaint, um, filed or a foodborne illness that could be linked to your food, I will investigate as part of my responsibility. Could be knocking on your door, what's going on, find out what's going on. Now, I've never had a, a complaint regarding honey. So I think you folks all in all are doing a pretty good job out there. But in case something like this happens, it's probably more geared toward your typical cottage foods. But we could knock on your door. Don't be surprised. As part of the investigation, it may be necessary for me to come, enter, inspect, review your records. I may take some pictures. But once again, that's only for a foodborne illness complaint if we feel it may be linked to you. Um, we also have the right to seize your product. Maybe it's, we, it's adulterated for some reason. Maybe there's pesticides in it. Uh, we can order, order label corrections. Maybe you don't have your product labeled correctly, uh, and we can kind of tell you, hey, you're adding flavorings to your honey. You have to be licensed in order to do that. You got to quit doing that. This is what y'all have been waiting for here. Uh, maple syrup and honey producers, the bill was introduced back in February 18th of last year to exempt you folks. Finally was signed into law by Grant, Governor Granholm. The language is very similar to the cottage food provisions. That's why I mentioned that to you. I went through that a little bit for you prior to that. Here's the kicker here. You can wholesale to retail establishments. The bread makers, cupcake folks, they can't. You folks can. Gross sales of $15,000 or less. Uh, Debbie Matson, I received a bunch of questions from her, from you folks, I'm guessing. So what I did is I put this together for you to hopefully answer some questions for you. Can an unlicensed honey producer sell to retail stores? We already covered that, but yes, you may. Gross sales shall not exceed $15,000, and that's in a, a fiscal year or in a year. Bulk honey is not allowed to be sold. Since yesterday's presentation, I talked to my supervisors back at the Department of Ag, and what it is, you can't sell bulk honey to, let's say, a retail establishment that then is going to hold that honey where consumers can kind of come up and bottle themselves. However, you may sell bulk honey to a restaurant, a broker, a wholesaler. So you are able to do that. Prepackaged only. That's if you're going to be at a farmer's market and you're selling it, same thing. We don't want bulk honey out there. We want you to already have it prepacked, ready to go. So when I say prepackaged only, that's if you're selling it at markets, things of that nature. Labeling consistent with the cottage food law, which the next page will get into more detail for you. What do you need, common or the usual name of the food? As I mentioned before, honey, raw honey, comb honey. Name and address a responsible party. We've had a lot of questions regarding that. What, what does that mean? What do I need to have? It must be declared as a unit. That means it's all together. You can't have your name here and address down here. This is what's required on there. The address must include the street address, city, state, and zip code, and obviously your name as well. The only exception to that is, if I can look it up in the phone book with your name and city, you can omit the street address. So it could be John Doe, Imlay City, Michigan, and your zip code. That would be adequate. However, if I can't find you in the phone book, you gotta put your entire street address. And you may ask, why is that? Let's say if I had a complaint and I needed to get a hold of you. I can go to your address, I can leave something on your door and say, please contact me. That's the whole idea of having this information available. You need to have net, net contacts. Weight, as I mentioned, English and metric. Here's some questions. How big does it have to be? Font size is dependent on the size of the package. And what we call, we call it the principal display panel. And I brought something like that in here. Uh, this is for my recyclables. Principal display panels, what you're going to see as a consumer, the first thing you're going to see. So in this case, this is the principal display panel. And I do know if you have a principal display panel that's less than uh, five square inches or less, font size has to be minimum 1 16th of an inch. And there will be a website at the end that you can get into more detail regarding that. The, the panel immediately to the right, that's called the information panel. If you are required to put nutritional uh, facts on there, that's where that's going to go. 
The only time that's needed if you produce 10,000 units or more. If you're producing less than that, nutritional facts, you do not need that on there. As I mentioned before, the following statement, made in a home kitchen or facility, you may add if you want, that has not been inspected by Michigan Department of Agriculture, it has to be at least equivalent to 11 point font, which is 1 of an inch, and that is your lowercase o. That's how they decided as far as an eighth of an inch. Lock coating. Uh, a lot of you folks don't know what lock coating is. What it is, is let's say today you ended up bottling about 50 pounds of honey. All that honey you bottled that day. What you would do is on each con uh, label, you may write that as a number one. You may write it as the date. You can pick however you want to name it. But at the end of the day, a month later, I find one of your bottles and there may be an issue or a problem with it. I come to you and say, number one, what does that mean? You'll say, uh, that means on March 12th, I bottled 50 pounds of honey on that day. Um, and then we can go back. The reason why that's so important, let's say if there's a recall, something happened to your honey. We don't know what it is, but something did. And we can, uh, we can pinpoint it to one lot that you made. Now we're just going to recall that one particular lot. 50 pounds, whatever it is you did. If we didn't have a lot code and no way to distinguish between bottling this day or that day, we seize everything you produce. So a lot code is really, really important. It's for your safety, so that way if there is an issue, we only seize that lot. Let's hope we don't have to seize anything, but if we did, it's just gonna be that lot. List of ingredients. The cottage food law, the honey hobbyist law, doesn't allow you to add anything to your honey. So in this case, you don't need to put it. The only time list of ingredients needs to be put down if it's two or more ingredients. In this case, it's honey. Allergen declaration. Let's hope you're not doing tree nuts, peanuts, other things within your facility, something with wheat. So we're gonna hope we don't have to add an allergen declaration. Can we put organic on our honey label? What do we need to do to become an organic honey producer? This is very difficult. Uh, in order to be an organic farm, you cannot have a womanized mailbox post. And you'd think, who would do that? But that's part of being certified organic. So for you folks, you have to have it certified. How do you do it? You go through what's called organic certification. The United States Department of Ag Agriculture, they run what's called the National Organic Program. And they certify folks that would come out to your place and certify your farm as organic. I'm thinking it's kind of difficult to do because I don't think bees really know where to stop flying. So unless you're in the middle of a thousand acre field, it's probably very difficult to achieve this, but I don't want to uh, dissuade you for trying this. Um, the National Organic Program, uh, you can call them, phone number and that. This will be available at the end of my presentation. If raw honey has live enzymes and pollen and propolis in it, does that have to be listed as an ingredient? No, it doesn't. This is a natural part of raw honey. When you buy honey, you're going to get some extra things in there, and that's part of it. So I'm going to, so I'm going to ask, can I handwrite my weights on my labels? Yes, you can. It has to be the correct font size. It has to be legible and with durable ink or similar. Uh, in other words, it can't rub off. The inspector pulls my honey. Debbie Matson was in here yesterday and mentioned somebody pulled her honey. Why don't they contact me and the store owner? Here's our policy. We will notify the store of any seizures. We don't seize anything without talking to the management of that store. We may also call the honey producer, but we are not required to call you folks. Generally, that would be left to the store. Hey, you got your honey from an unapproved source, whatever it might be. I'm not sure the reason. In her case, I think she said she didn't have her name on her honey. But we would not necessarily call you. Someone asked can advertise their honey as allergen free. No, allergies are different for different people. You know, in the United States, we have some food allergen groups, uh, dairy, wheat, um, eggs, shellfish. In Europe, celery's on their list. It's not here. So as you can imagine, how can you ever say anything's allergen free? So no, you can't. Someone asked, can we advertise as gluten free? Well, yeah, you can. Gluten's found in wheat, so I'm not really sure how you're going to get gluten in your honey. I've seen orange juice advertised, gluten-free, so everyone's on this gluten-free kick. I talked to the FDA, I was there last week, and I said, can they say gluten-free? And they go, yeah, they can.
But most people that have wheat allergies, I think they kind of figure out there's not gluten in honey. But you never know. Here's a big one. Can we use hang tags on our smaller jar, uh, jars and honey bears? Yes, you can. And here's a suggestion I have. The website at the end gives you labeling requirements for typical size containers, you know, a certain principal display panel. As you know, some of these honey bears are different. Where are you going to put the stuff? So it's going to be that Michigan labeling guide really isn't going to fit into place in here. It doesn't fit within the box. What I'm asking is maybe if we get four or five labels with hand, hang tags and smaller jars, you folks can submit it to us. I will then punch it up to our label review specialist. She will tweak it. She'll do whatever she needs. And then maybe these particular labels, MBA can put it on their website. So now you folks don't have to guess, how do I label this thing? Here's a small bear. Hey, here's an example. We'll label it like that. So now you can all be in compliance. I think it'd be a great idea. So I would like you folks to do that if you have questions on your labeling. The tag has to be durable. Now, if we go to a store and there's hang tags, but there's only two of them left, the rest are ripped off, that's not going to work. So, and I know durable is kind of arbitrary, but that's the word we have today. Contact your local inspector. This 800 number throughout the whole state of Michigan, you can reach your inspector. And all you need to have is what county you're in and what zip code. They will then text the inspector out to this phone that I have. Well, not this one, their phone, and then they'll get back with you. Your inspector is a great resource for you. We really want to promote business in Michigan. I think most people that have dealt with the food inspectors were very helpful. Yes, we may tell you some things you don't like to hear, but in general it's because it's food safety issues. But we are a great resource and we want to help. That's the key. But obviously if we find something wrong, in general, honey, it's not a big deal. But if I go to a grocery store or something and I see they're doing something wrong and it's going to make you folks sick, I don't care how mad they get at me. I'm doing my job. I'm pulling that food. I'm going to correct their behavior. Someone asked, do our labels have to be in black and white because that's the way our website picture showed it? No, in the state we can't use color because it costs extra money. So yes, you can use colored ink if you want. We can't. Can we add flavorings or other ingredients to our honey? No. This can only be done by, by licensed honey producers. A uh, lady here in the front asked me, what happens if I extract my honey in a honey house I then go to a licensed kitchen, which I've licensed her in. Can I now add flavorings to my honey? Yes, you can. A food license is $70. goes from May 1st till April 30th. And a licensable kitchen could possibly be a VFW hall. It could be a local church. Uh, there's many. Uh, it could be a restaurant. Maybe after hours you can use something like that. But same thing as before you spend a ton of money, Call the 800 number, get a hold of your local inspector and say, hey, I would like to use this facility. Does this meet our minimum requirements? We'll look at it and say, yes, it does, or whoo, you got a bunch of stuff to do. So how do I reach my local inspector? I gave you this number before, 800-292-3939. Anywhere in the state of Michigan, call that number. Uh, you can talk to my supervisor. You can talk to individual inspectors regarding that. Now one of the questions was, what is the single most common thing field inspectors would like to say to us as a whole? There really wasn't a consensus. Are you guys doing something bad? Are you doing something really great? But I guess our one concern might be, as far as honey is, use care with pesticides. Uh, we did have an issue with one honey producer in the past with the impro uh, improper use of pesticides in their packing room and hives. Uh, they were extracting their honey, and I'm sure you folks know, you get a few bees in there, all right? Well, they decided, we don't want them in there. We're going to spray it with Raid. Well, that's going to adulterate your honey. I'm sure 99.9% .9 of you know that, but unfortunately, there's 0.01% that don't. So sometimes you guys get put in the same bucket as them, which isn't fair. Um, read the pesticide label. It's critical. The label's law. The label's pretty much going to tell you when and when you can't use it. So read the pesticide label. What would we like to see improve? Lot, lot coating. We really don't see lot coating on uh, products, maple syrup or honey, as much as we really should. Uh, the FDA, they do require lot coating on any wholesale product, and it really has to do with recall so we can backtrack, figure out what it came from, what batch, what's going on. And once again, for your own 
well-being, it may limit how much of a seizure we may have to do. So if we can limit it to one day of production, maybe, I know you didn't do it, but you sprayed RAID that day, pesticides got in there, we're pulling that, as opposed to we're pulling everything you ever made. We don't want to do that. We are here to help you. You may not think it sometime, but we truly are. Here to help you and help protect the public. The, the top one just gives basic information of the cottage food law. It really doesn't pull out much information for you folks as far as honey and maple syrup. It really talks about the cupcake folks, the bread folks, and that. Um, the food labeling guide, from uh, this is probably the most important one right here. This is the one that tells you what the font size has to be, depending on how big your principal display panel. I realize this is a very long address, but I did copy it and paste it, put it in mine, and it works just fine. For you folks that want to go organic, this is, how you're gonna, uh, this is how you can get to the National Organic Program. Last but not least, this is how you can find your accredited organic certifying agents. There are none in Michigan. Closest are Ohio and Indiana, I believe. But that's the website. Couldn't tell you the cost that that would require. Um, wow, I'm 11 minutes over going that quick. Questions? Oops, sorry guys. Let me, uh, let me uh, put that website one back on there so if any of you folks need to jot that down. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Hey, I'm here anything. You got it. You're making cookies for the celebration cake. You can put vanilla or strawberry flavor in the icing on the cake. Absolutely. Yes. Why 